Okay, we're back, we're live. Welcome to Research in Manoa here on Think Tech. Tonight, we're going to go right into the center of that issue and talk with our special and honored guest, Vasilis Sirmos, the Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation at UH. This is the man who runs it all. Welcome to the show, Vasilis. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. In 2013, when the Board of Regents appointed Vasilis as the VPRI, Vice President of Research and Innovation of the University, replacing Jim Gaines as the VP of Research, it also added the word innovation to the vice president's title. One of the new VPRI's properties is to support significant growth in research through the University of Hawaii's Innovation Initiative. Was that H12, is that? H-I-2. Square. H-O-H-I squared. Square. Okay. This initiative seeks to double the state's research enterprise, at least at the time, to one billion annually. We're gonna ask them about that over the next decade. The VPRI is also charged with critical leadership and coordination of system-wide research around the university and innovation around the university, including management and direction of UH's research support, technology transfer, and many compliance functions. For the seven years before that, Vasilis Simo served as the Associate Vice Chancellor for Research at the university. In that capacity, he worked on a range of projects, including developing major research facilities, such as the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Seymour, Dave Carl Seymour, the state's only laboratory to be rated lead premium, lead platform, lead platform platinum, I get it. Vasilis uh, obtained his PhD at Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta in 1991 in electrical engineering. Since 1991, he served in the Department of Electrical Engineering at UH Manoa, where he was a professor there. He also served as associate dean of the College of Engineering. He spent a sabbatical leave at the Boeing Company <clears throat> as a research fellow. His interests include, this is important, Ge ge geometric and algebraic approaches in linear system theory. Everybody, my wife and I talk about little else. <laughs> <laughs> Computational algorithms, methods for signal and image processing, robust optimal filter design in systems, medical imaging, and prognostics and diagnostic methods related to condition-based maintenance system across the board. It touches everything. He's the author or co-author of more than 100 journal and conference papers and the book called Optimal Control, second edition, John Wiley, 1995. He was an associate editor of Circuits, Systems, and Signal Processing. We're gonna find out about that. He has served in numerous international scientific conferences and committees. His research has been funded by the National Science Science Foundation, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, it must be UARC, the Office of Naval Research, the National Air Systems Command, uh, the Naval Sea Systems Command, I could go on, the Air Force Research Labs at Wright-Patterson, the Army Research Labs, again the Boeing Company, Hawaiian Electric Company that we here in the last hour, uh, and Hamamatsu Photonics. He's been a consultant for the Canada-France Hawaii Telescope, CFHT, Innovative Solutions, Novasol, we know them, Science Technology International, and others. He's a Walter Wellover, uh, make that a Boeing Wellover Fellow, a member of the Advisory Board of Hawaii Technology Development Venture Program, a member of the Sigma, what is it, XI Research Organization, and a senior member of IEEE, but of course, we would assume that. Tonight, we'll see if we can get him to tell us how research is doing at UH, its most productive areas, its successes and challenges, its patents, commercialization and sale, and what he sees for the future. Wow. Let's begin with the glamour of Vasilis. We need to know what's hot in research at Manoa, what research, what fabulous, famous researchers are here now, the discoveries and how the discoveries will change our science, our community, and our world. Let's dive in and talk about disruptive science. In science, disruption is always good, right? Always, <laughs> always good. <laughs> so tell us about research and innovation at UH Manoa. So let me start, uh, Jay, from how we organize our innovation portfolio, and it always starts with excellence. So we're looking how to strategically invest the next 24 months, and therefore we're partitioning our portfolio in five areas without, without saying that these are the only areas. We're always being opportunistic, but these are the five areas we've been working for a long time. So without uh, any surprises, uh, one of our hubs is ocean sciences, climate sciences, climate change, conservation biology. So that is so a, west mostly. 
Mostly soist, as yeah. you know, uh, but there are in other campuses as well. But mostly soist, it is actually one of the premier institutions in the country and in the world. And that is something we're excellent, we're outstanding, and we need to invest in the future so we maintain our excellence. Uh, the next one, which uh, it's not a surprise to anybody either, is astronomy. And uh, I say astronomy, but it actually is much more than that. When I say astronomy, it's not just telescopes. Astronomy for us is instrumentation, optical systems, space. Uh, we have a lot of research in space. We have a lot of recent uh, research on mission support for Mars. So there are a lot of areas under that, uh, that hub, if you will. And we've been doing extremely well. This is a very important area for the university. Probably the university is world renowned uh, for our research and instrumentation. And then we're looking at areas where they're very important to our state. And the, one of the most important for us is uh, uh, wellness and health wellness and medical sciences, cancer center, our JAPS medical school not only because of the great research they do for infectious diseases, for diabetes, but also because they train great doctors. That's the innovation. And whenever people ask me about medical school, and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, outside people sometimes say, isn't the medical school expensive to run? And the answer, yes, it's very expensive, and we're going to support it. And the answer, and uh, the question I have for them: Do you think this would have been a better place without a medical school, without a cancer center? Would you like to live here? <laughs> so that's the investment in, in that area. It's very important for us. Yeah. I even for the cancer center. For right now, you go to precision medicine, personalized medicine. Uh, you look at our ethnic diversity. Uh, our ethnic diversity is unique, but the way our state looks today, the world is going to look 20, 25 years from now. So medicines and treatments that they are developed for, for us, they're going to be applicable for everybody in a decade or two. And then, of course, it's very, we are an island community, so energy is a big part of our portfolio. It's a big part Aloha, of our research, we... enterprise, and innovation. And agriculture Aloha, is another one we touch. Sustainability is a big area. And we've been good. We have been very good uh, because we want to be good stewards of what we do. I'm Ethan and Allen, host of Likeable Science. Very close to me is high performance computing, data intensive science, data visualization, cybersecurity. It touches everything else we do from astronomy, from ocean, from medicine, from energy. So that's the way we're organized in our research. And this institution is one of the best in the country. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think people realize. We, we, we touch a little here and a little there. We see a newspaper article about this or that. But, you know, to hear you say, to talk about those five areas, it makes me realize that it's enormous and it's world class. And we have this in, enormous organ of information and data and research happening right here. In our, it's fabulous what you're describing. I, I'm really impressed. I'm more impressed than I was before you started, actually. So let me, let me say this, though. Um, it, also, it serves science. Mm -hmm. It serves the world in terms of dealing with you know, other institutions around the world and being at a par or better than mm -hmm. many of them. But it also serves the community. Yep. So you get it going in all directions. Aloha. This is relative to New everyone. Year. It's yes. 2017. And the research, if you think about the research that this institution does, uh, it has a broader impact for this community. As I say, can you imagine this state without a medical school? Can you imagine this state without the oceanography program that it is one of the best in the country? We just realize where we are. We're in the middle of the ocean. Can you imagine this state without being pioneer in astronomy? It has a much broader impact. We do research in agricultural system. We do research in energy. It has a broader impact. And a lot of these things are going to save our state. 
Yes. You know, you have people in SOAS who understand about sea level rise and climate change. Yeah. They're going to give us advice. They're going to help us save ourselves as and when it comes to us. Yeah, so the climate uh, change is real, first of all, and the School of Ocean Earth Science and Technology, SOAS, the, the is one of the best schools in that area. They actually work with the state, they work with DLNR in order to develop policies, especially for sea level rising. And if you think about it, our tourism is, most of it is in Waikiki. If it goes one foot, uh, if the sea level rises one feet, then if you start one foot, you're going to have a lot Sorry. of issues. A lot of issues. So, I mean, the mission for the city council, yeah. for, for the state legislature, is to listen to your scientists. Because they do come around. They offer their thoughts. They are very community-minded more and more, as far as I can see. And government has to listen to them because they hold the keys to our future. They, they can save us uh, if, if we listen to them. Yeah, it's, they do great research. Uh, we're very good at that. And uh, where we want to push now the envelope is also we want to push the envelope in innovation. We want to create more revenue. We have an excellent portfolio in extramural funds. We're around $400 million to 450. Uh, we create 8,000 jobs. I don't know if people understand that. We employ just on our extramural funds. These are not state funds. Uh, these are funds we compete. Uh, and we get in the state and we create 8,000 jobs for these $400 million. But we need to take this uh, further. We need to create an innovation economy. We need to create a workforce that it is ready to get into any type of uh, economy, knowledge-based economy, whether it's here or global. And everybody talks about, uh, oh, we need to create all the jobs for the kids to stay here. I take a different tack on that. Yes, we need to do that, but in my opinion, we need to create an economy, innovation economy, that even if we send our kids outside of this state, is not a bad thing. It's a great thing to experience different things. But when they decide to come back, they should be able to come back to well-paying job or a job as well paying as the one they have in the mainland. So that to me is much more important than, hey, let's keep all our kids here on the island. We can't. You can't. So yeah. we, have, we have to figure out how to make the best of what we have, yeah. train them the best we can, and as you say, uh, offer them the opportunity to come back, the environment to come back to. And when we come back from this break, Bessels, we're gonna, you're going to tell me how. I we, will try. <laughs> you're going to tell me how we're going to do that. Really important question. We'll be right back with Vasily Sermos. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connect. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And they'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stu- I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come we're back. We're live here on Research in Manoa with Vasilis Simos, who is the, the center, if you will, of Research in Manoa. He's the mm, vice president of research and innovation since 2013, and he's talking about, you know, how it works up there and what it means to the state. One of the things that came up in the break is, you know, this is really the intellectual center, uh, the juggernaut, if you will. Yeah. Uh, of the state, of the state's thinking in advance, and is recognized, I can tell you from our shows on research, um, it's recognized around the world as excellent. I don't think people fully appreciate that. And, and your point also that, you know, we, yes, we can train them, and yes, we have to understand many of them are going to go away, um, but we can get them back. And the trick is when they come back, or when they think of coming back, there's a, there's a what do they call it, a cloth mother. Yes. <laughs> a cloth mother for them. How do we do that, Mr. Oh, that's a, that's a very tough question, and it will take actually days to answer, but uh, 
I, we need to create some of these jobs. And in order to create some of these jobs, you need to create opportunities. In order to create these opportunities, you need to create a small business environment that does engineering, does science, does computing, does cybersecurity, energy. So we need to actually nurture our small businesses. We need to nurture our startups. So we need to teach our students not to be just a good employee, but also to be a good employer. So they got to have some innovative skills. They got to be entrepreneurial. And again, it is different not only in Manoa, but in the whole system. We need to be out there and teach our kids, our students, some elements of innovation, entrepreneurship, and teach them again and again how to fail and get up, dust themselves, and go on. And even if they don't do anything with that in their life, it is a lifelong experience. And how we do that, how we integrate that in the curriculum, it's a tricky situation. So we need to train students not only to be good employees, but also to be good employers. So that's, I think, the trick here. Well, I can just some of the icons that I've seen. You have the Shidler School. Yes. At, at the Pace, yes. the Pacific uh, yes. Asian is a Center for Entrepreneurship. Yes. The Susan yeah. uh, Yamada. Yes. Scott uh, Yamada, whatever. Susan, yeah. And um, she's going to come on the show pretty soon. Oh, good. And, um, and, you know, and you have the Innovation Center, yes. which used to be the David Lasner building. Yes, yes. That's now the now they've got Lasner. another David Lasner. <laughs> that's your building, too. <laughs> and, um, you know, you, got the, you have these, um, you know, icons of teaching people entrepreneurship, teaching them how to collaborate, yes. and make business, you have Accelerate. Yes, Accelerate UH is another activity. So uh, first of all, let me go back to PACE. And uh, as I tell uh, Susan Yamada and the dean of the, uh, of the business school, uh, Vance Rawley, PACE is not just the entrepreneurship center for UH Manoa. PACE should be the entrepreneurship center for UH system. And they have done a magnificent job. They have created programs beyond having a beautiful infrastructure nowadays. They have created programs like the business plan competition, the venture well, the startup parad week in paradise. So they create that activity. The students come in, the faculty. It is a great, uh, it is a great program. So kudos to them. And, uh, and we like to, to work with them all the time and support them. And now we have the Innovation Lab, which is a co-working space. It is in yeah. the middle of we the campus. We made a movie about that. It was very interesting to yeah. see how it worked. Yes, and it is uh, in the middle of, uh, of the campus where all the traffic, the student traffic takes place. It's uh, close to the Warrior Rec Center. So it is a place where people can go, can uh, do projects. It's, uh, it's, it's a good opportunity. It's a good thing. We want to put more spaces like that on campus and in other campuses. We're working also with Capilani Community College to put a space like that. Uh, we're working with UH Hilo to put a space like that. And wouldn't it be wonderful to create a, a dedicated building for co-working space, incubator startups for the university. This is something that um, it's very dear to me and uh, I would like to do in the near future. You go to a lot of research one institutions like Manoa and you see across the street there is a uh, co-working space that does all the incubations for the startups, it does the accelerator programs, technology transfer, it's nice, funky, beautiful. So I think these are some of the things we need to, to push for. We need to expose our students to this type of activity. Now, what about the, uh, it used to be known, I'm not sure it's called the same thing anymore, but the Office of Technology yes. Transfer and Development, yes. uh, help you get patents, give you some money for yes. protecting your property? Yes. So we are just finishing up or breaking up the office and putting it together a little bit differently. So we're out there uh, advertising, we're trying to recruit the chief innovation officer, which does more than just the patents and uh, the technology transfer. But also that person would all overlook the UH Ventures. Nowadays... That's a we, better idea. Yes. That's a broader it's idea. It's a broader idea. So yeah. we take also equity in our startups. So the university invests in some of our startups and we take equity. So we put some skin in the game and we want this... Uh, uh, these companies to to actually succeed and it takes one or two right we're going to fund sure. many but it's going to take one or two yeah if you have a success it's and a leadership thing everybody yeah. follows that yes yeah. and then the third part of that is uh, we are creating an office of strategic grant developments and uh, 
especially to deal with small business innovation research, SBIRs and STTRs. Our faculty are extremely good in, light, in writing grants. We want to create a vehicle for them to write more SBIR, SBIRs and STTRs. Yeah, yeah, there's so money out there still. There's still, still money, money out, out there, there for that. <laughs> yes, let's cross our fingers. You know, uh, it, I think part of this, uh, uh, developing this mindset of innovation and commercialization and having a business so those kids can come back again, um, is coming downtown. And I, I really appreciate you coming downtown, yeah. talking to me. Yeah. I appreciate the Research in Manoa show that's yeah. organized by SOWEST. And so many other scientists who yes. come from the university sit here and, and put it out so that people can see it. And they do watch it, and they're interested in it. Just today, earlier today, we had a meeting at ThinkTech with one of our prospective guests, who is one of the managers of one of the downtown office buildings. And they were talking about building a system in their building that would be like a commercial, like a downtown serious business co-working space where there'd be a place to park or park your bike mm -hmm. and would be a shared space with all the accoutrements of an office building uh, right here, right down the block from the capital interests yeah. and from the business and from the government. Yeah. Um, and that would be a fantastic connection for the university to have to insinuate itself yeah. uh, and to have access to all these business services. What do you think? Actually, this is great, right? Uh, co-working space downtown or in Chinatown or Kakak or and you see young people like to be downtown. That's where the action is. They like to be at Kakaako. They like to be now in Chinatown. You see a lot of these co-working space, incubator spaces uh, are going to open up. And uh, I think they're going to do well. And uh, what uh, I have to tell is uh, one of the first times that you see, as you said, the business community has taken that movement seriously. You have the Hawaii Business Roundtable, the Chamber of Commerce. Yep, yep. They actually, the banks, they have actually embraced that idea. And if you do not have these entities embrace that idea, you're not going to go very far. Uh, Bishop Street is a tough place to be. So you need these bigger businesses to welcome you, right? And they have uh, actually, they have been very supportive. We have the Hawaii Business Roundtable Innovation Initiative. Uh, they have been such supporters, not only for the university, but for everybody out there. So these are great things. Uh, hopefully, we're going to see more of that, and we're going to see our legislature actually to, to, uh, to appreciate that, yeah. not only by saying it, but also funding it, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it is a good thing. It's a very high priority. It's the future of the state, really. I mean, we have to we have to develop this kind of as an alternative to tourism. Yeah. We we have to hold the kids or at least train them really well here. The university is really, in many ways, I've said this for many years, is our future, and uh, we we have to support it, even if it hurts. We have to support it. Yeah. But let me uh, let me let me turn to money for a minute. Okay. Uh, in that piece I, I was reading from in my opening, you know, they said that it, uh, that uh, Marcy Greenwood wanted to have a yes. billion dollars, yes. and she saw it as an income as yeah. a as a business itself, yes. because the billion dollars comes in and yes. it comes to researchers and it's spent on research yes. and it filters down through the community and, and we have a substantial business. Yes. We have a billion yes. dollars coming yes. in. Uh, you mentioned earlier a few minutes ago that w w last time we looked it was 400 million. Yes. Um, how do we get from 400 million to a billion? Yes. Uh, Sorry well, I asked. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but this, uh, this is a really... Uh, tough question in the sense that uh, people need to understand and you don't wake up uh, one morning and you say now I'm going to double my research expenditure and to give you an idea is to double something you need first of all to have the infrastructure that is physical infrastructure but also it is intellectual capital infrastructure mm -hmm. The idea is now, you, for example, in our flagship institution, which is Manoa, if you look at that research infrastructure over there, uh, yeah, physically in buildings, uh, how can you double your research when your buildings are, are limited. limited and they are in such poor state? How will you be able to attract these researchers and faculty into that type of infrastructure? That's a really good question. So, there are a couple of ways. Someone is going to have to fund, either you're going to fund the infrastructure or you're going to have to fund the intellectual capital. The university cannot do both. So we have, you know, we're out there, we are trying to educate the legislature, we're trying to put uh, our requests together. The president is doing a magnificent job for doing that. But unfortunately, someone is going to have 
to pay something to go from 400 million to a billion. And then on top of that, sequestration came in. It was lifted. Now sequestration is back in the talk. We don't know how the, in the basic, legislature this session. No, but the, I'm talking about the federal government. Federal government. Now. Okay. So it's a very different environment, federal government right now. How research and development budgets are going to, uh, I don't want to say suffer, but how they're going to survive, where all this uh, uh, R&D money going to shift? Uh, is it going to be very targeted or is it going to be open? All of these are questions that. The, are very difficult right now. The environment is not the best. Hopefully, certain areas we're good at uh, are going to survive, going to do well, and therefore we're going to be opportunistic. Wow. Yeah. Hard question, hard that answer. That is a very hard question. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, what can we do? Uh, leaving it, you know, in this in this discussion, what can we do? What can the public do? What can the legislature do? What can the university do yeah. uh, to raise the money to achieve that goal? and to you know, bring this to sort of um, a, a global funding position? Yeah, I think uh, what uh, the legislature could do is actually fund our uh, capital improvement uh, requests. Uh, the capital improvement request at least will bring our physical infrastructure up to par with our competition. Once we have that, we can go out there and hire the best and the brightest in order to increase our extramural funding. If we don't have that, how are you going to bring people, right? Uh, you have to compete with other institutions and our peers, or at least Manoa's peers as a research institution is the University of Washington, Oregon State. So, uh, you, you know, maybe we need all to go take a tour and compare facilities and compare infrastructure. Yeah. Was it uh, the cost of bringing infrastructure up would be about 500 million? Yes, I think okay. it will be around 500 million. So, uh, you know, to, uh, to to close our show, I'd like you to I'd like you to speak to the public, Vasilis uh, Sermos, uh, and tell them what they should be doing. And by the way, you could you could fold in the legislature too. <laughs> no, no, I don't <laughs> want to do that. No, I as I said, uh, what I want everybody to take away from from this today is that. Uh, the University of Hawaii system is a unique institution. We are 10 campuses. The research flagship institution is Manoa, and it is one of the best in institutions in the country, and we need to be extremely proud of its success and actually celebrate its success. Be proud and uh, have pride in whatever we do. We want our kids to be exposed to the best, and Manoa and our UH system is one of the best educational systems in the country. You know, when we were doing uh, Hawaii Public Radio a few years ago, maybe 10, um, there was a popular bumper sticker, and it said, <clears throat> Have you hugged your researcher today? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did not know. <laughs>